All right, today we're going to be taking a look at some exponential functions. And uh, to start with, what I would like to look at is an actual graph of an exponential function. Um, my exponential function here is f of x equals 2 raised to the x power, so it is an exponential function. All right, if I want to graph it, then I would have to create an xy table. All right, this can be somewhat time consuming, but not too bad as long as it's a relatively simple function like that. I would probably run values from negative 3 to 3. Uh, plugging them into the function, I would generate this set of numbers. Okay, now plotting each one of those points, then I can see that my graph gets really, really, really close to my horizontal asymptote here. I've already put it in there at y equals zero so that it shows out really, really good. All right, and then the function uh, continues without bound as x approaches uh, infinity. Now, this would be an actual graph of an exponential function. All right, from that, I can clearly see my domain would be from negative infinity to infinity, and my range would be then from zero to positive infinity. Now, if that's all I want is domain and range, I just need a rough sketch of what this function would look like. I really don't need to go to the trouble of making the xy table being very, very precise in plotting the points. Okay, so I, that's what I want to address is just a rough sketch of these exponential functions and about three different kinds and how they flip and that sort of thing. All right, now I do want to point out um, the fact that this base function always is going to go through 0, 1 because we're going to use that 0, 1 point as our guide point to help us in our shifting. Okay, so um, let's take a look at three functions here that we can sketch. All right, now on this first one, or and, and with all of them, all right, I've got them in pretty much general form. This would be my h value here. This would be my k value down here. All right, as with all of our functions, all right, our h value tells us how far we are going to move opposite left or right. So that minus 3 right there tells us I'm going to shift 3 to the right. All right, and this k value out here is going to tell me how I'm going to shift same up or down. So the graph's going to shift up too. All right, now that reference point that I was talking about, all right, this graph I picked in particular because of the one that I just showed you where we actually graphed it. This one is 2 to the x minus 3 plus 2. So it's the exact same base graph that I just showed you the actual graph of, and then I'm just going to be shifting this. So that point zero one, all right, I'm going to put on here. Now, I'm going to do it like with a little yellow highlighter right here. hope that shows up. Um, that's just going to be my guide thing. That's the point I'm going to shift, okay? So I'm going to look at my shifting rules here. This says I'm going to go to the right 3. So I'm going to shift over 3 and then up 2. So I'm going to take that yellow dot I have there. I'm going to go 3 to the right, and then I'm going to go up 2. So that would be 1, 2. So 3 to the right, up 2 from there. And that is the actual point that my graph is going to go through. Now, when the graph shifts, that horizontal asymptote also shifts. All right, And as you remember from the first one, the horizontal asymptote is always going to be one below that zero one point. So where that point was on my original function, it went through y equals zero. So since my point goes through three, three, then my horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals two. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. Okay, now the graph's going to look the exact same way. I'm going to hug this horizontal asymptote. I am going to go up to the right without bound. All right, so a rough sketch there. All right, now from the rough sketch, I don't know how quickly this is going to go up. I don't know if it's going to go up slowly, and as the numbers change a little bit more, you really don't know that. But if I'm only trying to find domain and range, that's really all the more accurate I need from this. Okay, again, the domain on this is going to run from negative infinity to positive infinity, and then the range on this. All right, well, you can see it's getting really, really close to 2, so curvy bracket 2 to infinity. So from that I can find domain and range real quickly. All right, now the next two examples, um, changing the base to a one-half has a drastic impact on it and then having a negative in front of your base also has a drastic impact. All right, now the shifting part is going to stay the same. I am still going to use that same reference point of 0, 1 to start with right there. I'm going to put it in yellow since it's not really part of this, this sketch. All right, I am going to shift with the exact same rules that I had before. So this inside number here tells me I'm going to shift opposite left, right. This outside number is going to tell me how to shift 
up or down. And I'm going to go same. Okay, so from 0, 1, I'm going to go to the left 1 because it's opposite, left or right. So I went left 1 and then down 3. So down 3, that would put me on the axis is 1, 2, 3. So it's going to put my point right there. Okay, now again, that horizontal asymptote got shifted with the graph. It will always be one below it. So since that's sitting at negative 2, my horizontal asymptote is going to be at negative 3. All right, now what that one half base does, instead of hugging and going up this direction, it kind of just flips it and does it the other thing. So this one half is what is going to make the graph start up here high, come down, go through that point that we know it goes through, and then it's going to come and hug that horizontal asymptote. All right, now here again, just a really, really rough sketch. All right, I don't know the steepness right here. I do know it's going to hug right there, and that's about all I need if all I'm trying to do is find domain or range. So again, domain, domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, and my range then, okay, so how far down did the graph go? Well, right there it's going to hug and get really, really, really close to negative 3, so it's going to go from negative 3 all the way up to positive infinity. All right, now for a third example, okay, this one, um, I have shifting left or right because this is my h value, that's my inside part of my function, so I am going to shift opposite left or right, but there is no k value out here, and that's okay, that just means it's not going to shift up or down. Now, my base technically is still a 2. That negative right there really is indicating a little imaginary negative 1 that's being multiplied by the base. All right, And what that is going to do is it's going to reflect it across the horizontal asymptote. All right, so let's add that in here. All right, it's going to, it's going to reflect across my horizontal asymptote. All right, so let's start with our point at 0, 1. That's going to be my guide point. That's going to help me with my shifting. Okay, again, I put it in yellow. Hopefully the, that little yellow dot is showing up. Um, now, I'm going to shift opposite, left or right. So that's a minus 3, so that means I'm going to go to the right 3. One, two, three. All right, I do not have a K number out here at all, so I'm not doing any up or down shifting. So literally just 3 to the right, and that's where my dot's going to be. Okay, now that uh, horizontal asymptote is going to be the x-axis. All right, so so that we can kind of see it. That it, that is the horizontal asymptote because it didn't shift. Since I didn't shift up or down, the horizontal asymptote does not shift up or down. All right, now without the reflecting, without the reflecting, I'm going to put that on as a dotted line. All right, so that we can see it. It's going to hug down here just like our original graph did. It's going to hug the x-axis right there, and it's going to come up, go through that point, and then I don't know this exact steepness, but something roughly along those lines. Okay, now, that negative right there, in essence, reflects it across that horizontal asymptote. So it's just going to take it and reflect it over. So instead of going through 3, 1, it's going to go through 3, negative 1, and then the actual graph is going to look something like that. Okay, and I put this dotted so that we can see, okay, that's not really part of my sketch. This is the actual sketch. This was just so that I could easily see that reflection across that horizontal asymptote. All right, so, um, and then if I wanted to go ahead and identify domain and range on this one, I could, just to be consistent there, domain, again, will be negative infinity to positive infinity, and my range. All right, let's see here. This is going to go forever and ever and ever down here to negative infinity, and then it's going to go all the way up to zero, but get really, really close, not touch it. So negative infinity all the way up to zero. All right, so just um, a quick, easy way to sketch those exponential functions so that you don't have to take the time of doing an XY table. All right, you get a rough, rough sketch, but good enough to determine domain and range of those graphs.